Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let's continue the active and passive immunity and vaccination and different aspects. So in my last lecture you remember like we are talking about the same topic today also I mean in this lecture also we are going to continue hope we will um, complete the up to passive immunization and the uh, summary part in this lecture let us see. So this is acknowledgement for use of powerpoint presentation from January's book. So, now we are I mean after this attenuated vaccine now I am going to talk about the conjugate vaccine. Okay, conjugate vaccine have been developed as a result of linked recognition between T and B cells. I just mentioned little bit in the first lecture on this topic uh, passive and active uh, vaccination process like if we would like to uh, uh, activate the immune system against the polysaccharide what is going to happen because polysaccharide T cell is not going to be activated by polysaccharide. So, what to do? And so, new conjugate vaccine idea came and it was a very nice and clever idea I mean that was proposed and used and what are the bacteria this uh, Nigeria meningitis, Streptococcus pneumonia and Haemophilus influenza. Okay. So, these um, organism of these bacteria actually produce some polysaccharide against uh, which we need the vaccination. So, how it happened I mean how it is done. So, you see we are coming back to immunology how immune system react. So, this is B cell and say for example, any particular B cell receptor which can recognize this polysaccharide which is outside the bacteria. Okay. So, these so B cell receptor can recognize, but if it can bind, but these binding what will happen after this binding it will internalize that part you know and then it will be degraded. But in this degradation carbohydrate is not going to fit here which part will fit here this red part red part is the conjugated part. So, what is that this is tetanus toxoid. Okay. So, tetanus toxoid has nothing to do with this in this particular case, but we can have double protection. So, tetanus toxoid fused with that particular carbohydrate are taken up by the B cell processed and presented by presented by MHC 2 okay. presented by MHC 2 you see the MHC 2 is presenting the red part actually this red protein part is presented by MHC 2. So, this MHC 2 presentation will attract helper T cell it will bind activate and I am not going to be detailed on the how the T cell will activate B cell you already know that okay. it will give signal. So, this particular B cell which has a receptor against carbohydrate will be activated by presenting a protein and that is why it is called conjugated protein that means carbohydrate and protein is conjugated. So, T cell is seeing the protein part and activating the B cell, B cell is producing antibody where this antibody is binding, antibody is binding to the bacterial polysaccharide. Okay. So, that is how this particular conjugated vaccine developed against these three bacteria what I just showed meningitis, streptococcus and haemophilus influenza. Okay. And this is another the conjugate vaccine development this is particularly this um, immunization against um, meningococcus okay, the meningitis. So, what happened there are two serogroup this is a uh, story of uh, England and Wales. So, two serogroup of B and C is there. So, both used to create problem I mean cause disease. Okay. So, when the conjugate this is and just to see I will show the effect how this how good is this uh, conjugate vaccine is. So, this is the number of cases in different years from 97 to 2004 it is going up and down because it is a natural infection going up and down and in 1999 1999 C I mean immunization against C conjugate vaccine uh, serotype C conjugate vaccine introduced you see if you consider these two groups serotype group B and C 
B remain intact. So, after 99 there is no change in serotype B, it is as usual like some year it is going down, some year is going up, okay. uh, uh, but what happened to serogroup C? After introduction of the conjugate vaccine, if the number is gradually grow down in 2004 it is very minimum, I am sure now also it is I mean I do not have the data, but it is um, very minimum or no infection is there or even if it is there the number is pretty low. Okay. So, that means the sero conjugate vaccine is against this meningitis is working, it is the real case I mean it is not just the laboratory or the animal model. So, so far we said what? We said uh, whole cell vaccine attenuated or hit kill then subunit vaccine so, so much and so on, but besides that there is one more type of vaccine is also possible it is called peptide based vaccine. Peptide based vaccine means uh, say uh, let me draw that. So, suppose this is the protein okay, and in that protein in that protein um, we have we have different epitope okay we have different epitope so three epitopes are there so if i inject the whole protein what will happen antibody will be produced against epitope 1 say epitope 1 epitope 2 and epitope 3 so now instead of that instead of purify because many time what happen purification or the production of the complete protein is i mean really expensive and cumbersome okay pure protein isolation of pure protein in many cases it may not be possible for variety of reasons. Okay. This is not time or I do not have the time to explain uh, all these things. Variety of reason complete or pure protein isolation purification in large quantity is almost impossible for variety of reasons. So, that time what I can do? What I can think is instead of the whole protein I can just cut this region so, it is a small peptide hmm, okay, which has one epitope, you can have another. Okay. How do you know which part is the epitope? Many wet lab research you can determine which exactly the epitope sequence is. Besides that, there are many um, algorithm based softwares are available, where if you put the protein uh, sequence or the primary sequence of the protein, it can predict you how many B cell epitopes are there, how many T cell epitopes are there. Definitely there are certain points how they determine it, but uh, so few points are very uh, simple and straightforward. Say one point I can tell easily, all of you can understand epitope for B cell epitope it must be hydrophilic right, because it should be on the surface of the protein. So, this is one ep one the length okay, number of amino acids. Okay. There are, uh, there are many others, I mean uh, I am not going detail here. Anyway, so uh, what happened? So, this epitope prediction you can do by uh, uh, bioinformatic analysis or immunoinformatics, you can test it in the lab and figure out that this epitope, I mean this peptide if I take or this big peptide if I take that can be a good um, uh, antigen, but this peptide cannot elicit immune response by themselves. Okay. So, you need to add what? for any immune response you need one you need one B cell epitope along with that what you need you need a T cell epitope because until unless you have a T cell epitope it cannot act as immunogen. So, many times what we do is we add a another big protein called carrier protein okay, this is a peptide this is the peptide we add a carrier protein along with that and with uh, uh, adjuvant which is very important in that case. So, carrier protein peptide combination and adjuvant together we have to make. So, peptide alone cannot elicit the immune response. So, this is slightly disadvantage here and adjuvant we already told in case of human only approved adjuvant is alum. Okay, but in case of animal, because we need to raise antibody for many reasons in animal, for regular day to day research activity, for um, 
um, passive immune treatment that will come later. So, there, there are another very uh, important and very common adjuvant is there it is called friends complete adjuvant which contains oil water emulsion oil in water emulsion to make the micelle and another thing is used the heat killed mycobacteria actually whole mycobacterium is not necessary peptidoglycan uh, muramyl dipeptide is important okay uh, and, and the glycolipid tetrahalose di uh, mycolate is important but instead of that instead of purifying them the heat kill mycobacteria is mixed with oil in water emulsion and that is called friends complete in uh, adjuvant what we do actually for animal treatment when we inject or administer the antigen first time we do complete okay we, the whole, whole thing here okay the whole thing here we inject so we mix this mixture along with the antigen antigen plus friends complement adjuvant we inject but for booster dose we just use oil in water so first injection complete and second injection or the booster onward we use incomplete adjuvant what is incomplete we don't give this mycobacterium part only oil in water so this is only in case of animal not in human in human only adjuvant is alum okay that I already discussed protective immunity can be induced by DNA based vaccination like the you can inject directly the DNA. Okay. Vaccination and checkpoint blockade may be useful in controlling existing chronic infection that is important. What people are do now doing it now people are doing dendritic cell vaccination. Okay. So, dendritic cell loaded with the antigen okay, doing it outside and injecting it which actually what they are doing it they are inducing the um, different cytokine expression. So, activated dendritic cell cytokine activation which normally the immunocompromised or um, uh, infected person this is a particular case of human um, HIV infected individual. So, what happened many cases it happened if there is a weak response then this, but if the response is good you see the um, uh, viral load is much less. Okay. So, that means the dendritic cell mediated vaccination is also started and when it is shown that um, the vaccine made what is happening what is happening in that case that um, dendritic cell mediated vaccination in fact if this is the weak response if the IL 2 production is much less when where the response is good IL 2 is more interferon gamma is more okay, um, in strong response. So, that means this particular dendritic cells vaccines this is all very new um, development of the vaccination it is the latest uh, trend of vaccination it is just not because classical immunization process purification of the protein and injection is not enough for most of the disease that is why uh, people are trying several other strategy. Okay. So, um, that is uh, this is the reason and a recent train is a RNA vaccination. RNA vaccination is a lot of lab all over the world at this moment are trying to protect COVID infection or COVID 19 infection. Okay. At least next few years I know this is the COVID uh, uh, 19 infection year or the pandemic year everybody we know, but even for next several years we will remember what is COVID. So, what is RNA? So, not even the DNA to RNA step. So, directly for RNA virus taking the positive strand RNA and making a nanoparticle as a carrier injecting the RNA directly. So, that next step protein and, and uh, the immune system can be active. So, people are trying the RNA vaccination also. Okay. So, these are few things what uh, uh, about vaccination and vaccine production. So, before going to uh, the passive immunity I am um, uh, uh, let me uh, talk about vaccine production. Vaccine production is what? Vaccine production is production of antigen. Okay. So, if it is whole cell you have to grow the cell. If it is a I mean whole attenuated what I told you. So, you have to do all this thing. If it is heat killed you have to grow the cell and then either heat killed or um, inactivated by the chemicals. If it is a recombinant protein you have to produce a recombinant protein, but the problem here 
I though I told uh, little bit in between in the discussion, the problem it is the amount, the uh, total number of vials we need to uh, cater the whole world. Okay, in case of uh, COVID-19, but in some disease, what happened? It is uh, not happen every part of the country. Some part it is very much um, acute problem. In some country, you don't see all these disease and not all the population are affected by that, okay. but say polio all the I mean to eradicate polio from the whole world you have to vaccinate all the children and you need lot of vaccine for that. So, that production you need a big industry you need a big fermenter for that to um, grow the cells and you need a, a huge um, uh, um, system to purify the protein. Okay. Um, uh, from that grown suppose you are producing a, a recombinant protein in a bacteria. So, you have to grow uh, thousands of liters of bacteria and it is not like lab okay, we do just centrifuge 5 ml or 10 ml um, bacteria um, in a centrifuge small channel. Just imagine 10,000 liter you are growing not much 10,000 liter is a small scale 10,000 liter medium you grown bacteria you are centrifuging it. So, everything is huge it is just not scale up is very easily. Okay. So, uh, upstream and downstream is too different purification is very tough precipitation of the cell is very tough when you say 200 ml 2 liter culture is fine, but 2000 liter 20000 liter 200000 liter is not that problem is there maintenance is a problem supply is a problem and um, administration is a problem. So, we have we need lot of um, trained manpower to do that. So, it is just not the discovery of the vaccine we have to improve the whole system. So, that the vaccination is um, uh, vaccination is more effective and will be successful to remove or eradicate the disease in near future for almost all infectious disease I am definitely hope and some of you at least will study this in future do research and do something for vaccination it is the doing something for whole community whole world. Okay. So, next what I am going to talk about this is whatever I told is active immunity now the passive immunity. Passive immunity is what I already told passive immunity can be natural versus artificial. Passive immunity means when antibody is raised somewhere and you are getting a ready made antibody or T cell to protect the disease directly. Natural means it is very common all of us know the passive immunity what happened, when happened, when the baby is in the mother's womb what happened, immune system is developing right. So, mother's antibody are protecting the baby inside the mother's womb. Not only that I mean even the immediately after birth the immune system is complete ready, but they are not immunized and can protect immediately. So, immediately after birth before the breast milk started there is another very thick uh, uh, material uh, mother's body produced called colstrum and this one contains lot of antibody at least for few days it can protect the baby. So, here what is happening? this antibody produced in mother's body protecting the baby this is also a passive immunity. Okay. And the breast milk also contains some and gradually going down and slowly the amount of antibody reducing in the breast milk also. So, may most probably for 6 months a little amount of passive immune protection is coming from the mother that is natural immunity. Okay. And what is artificial passive immunity? Artificial passive immunity means say snake bite. What we do? We use anti venom antibody, which is already raised in other animal. Other animals means mostly the horse. Why you use horse? Because horse is a big animal. We can isolate more blood, more antibody. So, normally what happen? I I think I told in uh, one of the class if I remember that suppose tetanus, tetanus or rabies 
Okay, what happened? So, somebody got bite by a dog. Immediately we go to doctor for vaccination, but if the, that dog is severely infected with the rabbit virus, so that bite transmit lot of virus. So, if you give immediately the vaccination, what will happen? Vaccination will not work immediately, it will take time, but by that time the disease may progress. So, what we need? We need vaccination, so that if anything happen, the vaccination will protect, but if something happen immediately vaccination cannot protect that is that is the difference between active and passive immunity. So, we need some antibody which is already made somewhere to inject into that person who got the um, uh, bite to protect if there is any virus immediately transmitted to the body. So, that case both vaccination like the active and passive immune protection is required. So, vaccination of the rabies which is discovered long back is very effective will be injected as well as some antibody against the rabies virus which will not cause the disease will also be injected. In case of snake venom there is no question of active immunity, we need immediate neutralization of the venom or toxin. So, we need some antibody to be injected and that antibody should be ready right that is raised in horse and this is the artificial one. Okay. So, this is the artificial one neutral one we discussed and artificial one also we discussed. The first success story of the artificial passive immunity is the diphtheria toxin. Diphtheria is very dangerous disease for the kid particularly even for elder age, but normally it happens to kid that obstructs the throat and the airway. So, the breathing problem and ultimately death. Okay. So, what happened I mean people tried I mean the first experiment is in 1890 long back okay, S. Kitasato and Emily von Bering what they did they immunized the guinea pig against diphtheria with heat treated blood product from animals that had recovered from the disease. Okay. So, one animal which got diphtheria that blood was heat inactivated and injected into another uh, animal and what they saw? they saw the protection, okay, they saw the protection and in fact that was the that, that was the discovery of antibody. Okay. So, let me go back that was the discovery of antibody. So, what happened they figured out that the blood produced something which can neutralize or which can bind with diphtheria they named as antitoxin. Okay. So, that time antibody was not discovered, okay. they named as both of them received Nobel at uh, I think 1903 or some uh, year like that. And if you find the Nobel laureate history you will find many physiology and medicine Nobel are from immunology background. Okay. With respect to all other branches of biology if you see the number of Nobel laureates in immunology is I, I never counted that way, but it may be the most of them are immunologists. Some will be biochemists, some will be protein chemists that way immunologists are really in good number that discovery is most of the discovery. So, what happened not only they restricted this into animal that time you know the rules regulation and the act was not that strong. So, this antitoxin they figure it out they, pro they can protect the diphtheria infected individual also. Okay. So, that first discovered that secondary or passive immune protection is possible and this is how it is um, this passive immunity discovered and after that all snake venom all passive immunity um, and um, then rabies whatever I just told this one is discovered. But what is the advantage of and disadvantage of passive immunization advantage definitely is there just if you consider the rabies um, um, virus infection or the dog bite it gives immediate protection. Okay. Somebody got a cut go to hospital get tetanus vaccine that means, if something happened, but if some patient come with 
tetanus infection and with the symptom that means toxin is spreaded all over the body, you do not have the time for vaccination. So, you need immediate in uh, the administration of the anti tetanus serum or the antibody, so that all tetanus toxin neutralize that only can save you. So, that way active uh, passive immunization is much faster and give you more quick result, so that immunization cannot do that, okay. but that there is a disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? Normally, we develop the antibody against all this toxin and other virus in other animal and these animal antibody may act immediately and neutralize and do its job the person may be survive, but our immune system will find that horse antibody as a foreign protein. So, that I discussed once before also during idiotype and anti idiotype. So, that antibody will be treated as foreign our body will produce antibody against the horse antibody. So, gradually it will be neutralized by that time purpose is over, but what will happen that will not last for long time that will not last for long time. Okay. So, passive immunization that way is faster, but, but we cannot avoid that. Okay. There are many cases many cases and here is also the similar problem like you have to have lot of antigen to serve like just for example, there are so many dog bite in country like India. There is so many snake bite during the rainy season. Okay. So, just to cater those and they are not um, um, they are not going to do their job or that they are not working well throughout their life. So, every I mean passive uh, immunization the antibody also has a half life or the life or rather expiry date. So, after the expiry date, so normally what happen, so if it is written what we um, do see in the um, uh, medicine the expiry date, if it is written in any vaccine or this kind thing like through this is also just for uh, through August 20. 20. So, if it is written on this vial that means, September 1 we are not supposed to use whether it is good or bad we should not care, but if it is saying it is like fixed date 16 8 20 20 if the expiry date is written like this okay, fixed date that means, on 17th August we are not supposed to use. So, this is how specific it is. So, main I mean so when you are producing this any company those who are producing this first they have to produce a lot. Second if there is not used in time we have to throw it. Okay. So, there are a lot of loss in case of this kind of passive immunization material vaccine there is a demand. Okay and passive immunity the antibody produced in different company definitely there is a demand not only snake bite okay scorpion bite is also not uh, easily handleable so we have a uh, antibody to there are lot of scorpion which is very toxic okay mostly are toxic but some are very toxic that i mean that is the end uh, result so in that case we need this kind of thing Okay. So, what happened the passive immunization is not stop here. Now, people are trying how to avoid this uh, animal to make the antibody in the laboratory, so that it will be more humanized. Humanized means human will not figure it out as a foreign and develop antibody, so that it can last long okay. and that is actually the future trend. Okay. So, this is the future trend and this future trend we are going to discuss in the next class. And what will come many of you may know the monoclonal antibody, antibody engineering there are many things are there. So, in next, next lectures we are going to discuss how we can generate antibody in the lab purify it. So, we do not have to have use the animal or harm the animal and that is not only the single point that we not the harm animal as well as that antibody will be humanize so that human will not figure it out or human immune system will not figure it out them as foreign okay by
So, see you in the next class.